5G Satellites The World in a Radiation Cage A contribution by the World Foundation for Natural Science as part of their series How Artificial Electromagnetic Radiation Harms Life Part 3 For decades, scientists, medical associations and those affected have been demanding that the health effects of microwave radiation must finally be taken seriously and the precautionary principle must be applied consistently. Countless studies clearly show that the radiation triggers oxidative cell stress, weakens the immune system and opens the blood-brain barrier. Microwave radiation is a trigger or accelerator for all kinds of chronic and serious diseases. It should be noted that this is already happening with radiation intensities that are well below the official threshold values. Unfortunately, the recent introduction of the fifth generation of mobile communications, 5G, does not consider this evidence. It is being pushed through by many governments without scientific scrutiny. Even the wake-up call of the coronavirus, virus meets weakened immune systems, still seems to fade unheard in the noise of having to be seen to do something and endless decisions on what to do. This film contribution is dedicated to an aspect of the introduction of 5G where many fundamental questions still need to be answered. It is about the global network of 100,000 planned 5G satellites in space and their possible impact on our planet and life. 5G brings some changes. Due to the use of higher frequencies, it is planned to use frequencies of up to 100 gigahertz. A massive expansion of mobile antennas is necessary. This is due to the lower range of 5G and the increase in the transferable data volume by a factor of 100. The number of antennas will increase tenfold. And as if millions of antennas on Earth's surface were not enough, tens of thousands of antennas will soon be added in space. First and foremost, it is Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, which wants to launch up to 40,000 internet satellites into the orbit with its Starlink satellite program. By comparison, in December 2020, only about 3,400 active satellites orbited the Earth. That SpaceX is serious about its project is demonstrated by the fact that 1,200 new satellites were placed between December 2020 and March 2021. Amazon, OneWeb, Galaxy Space and other companies also want to join the race for 5G dominance and plan to launch a total of another 60,000 satellites. This will contaminate every inch of the Earth's surface with microwave radiation. However, who knows which technologies will be additionally installed in the satellites that could be used, for example, for military purposes. And who owns space anyway? Who decides on it? Up to now, the authorities of the respective location nation can issue permits. In the case of Starlink, it is the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, in Washington, D.C., the United States. It is very closely linked to the mobile phone industry. This American authority therefore grants permits for use that affect the whole world. Should not an internationally recognized body, free of all conflicts of interest, decide on this? In addition, to these more political questions, we should also look at why satellite radiation could be an unexpectedly big threat to life. All life is electromagnetic. What may sound strange at first is not at all on closer inspection. 
Isn't the electron the smallest fundamental building block of all life? With its electric charge, it orbits the atomic nucleus, forms atoms, and interacts with other electrons, atoms, and electromagnetic fields. The main component of all life, the water molecule, is also structured as a dipole, and thus has similar properties as a bar magnet, which aligns in the magnetic field. At the cellular level, the cell tension or the voltage-controlled calcium ion channels in the cell membrane show us the connection to electromagnetism. The transmission of stimuli in the nerve pathways, the heartbeat, an electrical impulse that can be made visible in the cardiogram, or the brain currents that can be recorded with probes. These are all electromagnetic processes that form the basic essence of life. It is likely that all chemical and biological reactions are preceded by electromagnetic processes. Even the blueprint of biological organisms is determined by electric fields, as the American professor of anatomy Harold Saxton Burr was able to demonstrate as early as the 1940s. Find out more in our article, All Life Works Electrically. On the large scale, as on the small, the habitat, Earth, and with it, all life in general, is embedded in a well-balanced, natural, electromagnetic environment. The Earth's magnetic field extends from the North Pole over the globe to the South Pole. However, these magnetic poles can deviate from the geographic poles and even migrate. The Earth is negatively charged compared to space, which causes a voltage difference of 400,000 volts between the Earth's surface and the upper end of the atmosphere. Complex processes caused by atmospheric electricity, thunderstorm activity and charge shifts by air ions or water molecules are a natural clock for life. The ionosphere begins at an altitude of about 80 kilometers above the Earth's surface. It is that part of the atmosphere that contains large amounts of ions and three electrons. The ionosphere is highly conductive, reaches its highest electron density at about 300 kilometers and ends at about 1000 kilometers. A standing electromagnetic wave, the so-called Schumann resonance, forms between the Earth's surface and this ionosphere. According to the Earth's circumference as wavelength, the base frequency is 7.8 Hz. Interestingly, this frequency also coincides with human brain waves at the seam between alpha and theta states. As early as 2001, New Zealand's environmental scientist Dr Neil Cherry showed in a groundbreaking publication how ionospheric disorders cause changes in blood pressure and melatonin levels and therefore can lead to cancer, reproductive disorders, heart and neurological diseases and even death. On an even larger scale, all celestial bodies from simple asteroids to moons, planets, suns, galaxies and universes are connected to each other via electromagnetic fields and are in permanent exchange of information. What was called ether in the late 17th century, a term discarded since then, is now gaining in importance once again. The airless space between celestial bodies is by no means empty but filled with electromagnetic particles, which are present as vortex changes called neutrinos. In his book, A Beginner's View of Our Electric Universe, Tom Findlay impressively describes how electromagnetism is the basic principle of the whole universe. Findlay illustrates how plasma physics can be used to consistently explain the celestial bodies known to this day, from planets suns to galaxies, pulsars to black holes. Here too, a basic prerequisite is that space is not simply empty, but permeated with conductive material, a plasma. 
In this plasma, gigantic currents flow between the celestial bodies, thus ensuring an exchange of energy and information. Everything is connected with everything. The saying acquires a completely new and concrete meaning from this point of view, in the purely physical sense. But back to Earth. Similar to the cell membrane, the ionosphere acts as a contact surface to the other celestial bodies and thus occupies a special position in the organism called Earth. And it is precisely in this protective sphere at an altitude of between 300 and 600 kilometers that 100,000 satellites are to be placed, which will contaminate the ionosphere, atmosphere, and the Earth's surface with sharply pulsed technical radiation. What influence does satellite radiation have on the ionosphere? Can it maintain its function? Will this affect the Schumann resonance? Will the life-sustaining charge differences between Earth and the ionosphere change? Who can answer these questions conclusively? Satellite radiation could also affect our weather and climate. Water is the main component of life, and it reacts very sensitively to electromagnetic radiation. Much research and experiments show not only warming effects, but changes in the water structure and the forces of order, even at very low radiation intensities far below the official limits. The water molecule reaches peak energy absorption at 2.4 gigahertz and is particularly sensitive. Of all frequencies, this one is used for numerous technical applications. The microwave oven, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi emit exactly at 2.4 gigahertz. Water vapour in the atmosphere emits a very weak signal in the range of 23.8 gigahertz which corresponds to the first resonance frequency of water, which is received by weather satellites evaluated and used for weather and climate forecasts. Absurdly, exactly the same frequency bands are also being released for 5G radio services, so that the natural water vapour radiation is superimposed and can no longer be evaluated correctly. This is already the case in the US and in Europe, the use of this frequency band for 5G is already planned. Reliable weather or hurricane forecasting will no longer be possible. Meteorologists worldwide are concerned about this development and demand that frequency bands close to these water frequencies should not be used technically. But what happens to the water vapour itself if it is stimulated by technical radiation in the range of its own resonance frequency? Is the water vapour balance disturbed in the atmosphere? Is global warming accelerating? No one can answer these questions yet. According to estimates by the European Space Agency, the ESA, about 10,000 satellites have been launched into near-Earth orbit since the launch of the Space Age in 1957 of which 3,400 satellites are still active. 22,300 debris objects are already circling around the Earth, so it's no surprise that the ESA Director General Jan Wormer warns of the very great danger posed by these pieces of debris. With the planned 100,000 5G satellites, space debris will increase many times over. Today's solution to satellite disposal is to burn them up in the atmosphere, returning them to Earth to sink them in the satellite graveyard of the South Pacific Ocean, or moving them into a more distant graveyard orbit. The Starlink satellites are designed for a service life between one and five years. It will be similar with the other companies. What a waste of valuable and rare raw materials such as lithium, cobalt, copper and gold. At least 20,000 failed satellites will have to be replaced and disposed of each year. The effects of rocket exhausts or the toxins released in the atmosphere by burning up space debris 
have hardly been studied. Some particles are very reactive, so small amounts of them could have a significant impact on atmospheric chemistry, says Martin Ross, one of the few experts to address the issue of atmospheric pollution from carrier rocket emissions and the burning up of old satellites. The scientists Ross and Vedder of the Aerospace Corporation show in their 2018 report that the sensitive stratosphere is so disturbed by the combustion products of the rockets, gases and particles such as, for example, aluminium and chlorine, that the depletion of the ozone layer is promoted and the atmospheric radiation balance is changed, which is expressed secondarily in changing weather conditions. Of course, sinking space debris in the South Pacific is just as stupid. History teaches us that every corpse in the basement eventually appears and must be properly discarded. So why not make sure from the start that this does not happen in the first place? The International Astronomical Union, the IAU, is concerned about these satellite constellations because in addition to atmospheric pollution, light pollution is also a major problem. Astronomical observations are disturbed by the thousands of light points at the nocturnal firmament, some of which are visible to the naked eye, and space loses its original purity. In order to better understand the universe, the principle of a radiation-free night sky is essential as a resource for all humanity and for the protection of nocturnal animals. From a philosophical and spiritual point of view, the undisturbed view of the immeasurable starry sky gives an inkling that life itself must go far beyond our physical earthly existence. The satellite plans are also in heavy contrast to the Space Treaty, which entered into force on October the 10th, 1967, and so far has been ratified by 110 states up to July 2020, including almost all states currently engaged in space activities. It stipulates that space should be used in such a way that its contamination and any unfavourable change in the earthly environment as a result of the introduction of extraterrestrial substances is avoided. Supposedly 5G is intended to meet users' needs, in particular data-intensive video streaming and the use of social media. Behind this, however, are much more far-reaching applications and intentions. The praised digitalization and technical networking of all areas of life, the Internet of Things, the progressive monitoring and manipulation of humanity, and as a crowning factor, the fusion of man and machine into the so-called cyborg. Are dark Hollywood fantasies really becoming a reality? The World Economic Forum, the WEF, gives high priority to human enhancement the technical extension of the apparently imperfect human being, as well as to 5G. Research is already taking place. In August 2020, the media announced that Neuralink had succeeded in implanting a chip into the brain of pigs that controls them through smartphones. In February 2021, it was additionally announced that monkeys would now enjoy video games thanks to this brain chip. The goal is to make technology usable to humans, says Elon Musk, founder of Neuralink, to the US portal Axios. Thanks to an interface, man should be able to control devices through his thoughts alone, or be able to exchange with other people and machines by means of artificial telepathy. It goes without saying that this requires powerful radio-based networks that cover every angle of the earth. Not only does it open the door to absolute control and manipulation, but man as an individual is deprived of his reason for existence and separated from his spiritual core. 
Is it not the case that man is destined to constantly learn, gain experience and develop? However, this is only possible if he has freedom of choice and can make decisions independently. In addition to countless activities, civic movements, initiatives and appeals, at the regional level, there is also resistance on an international stage to 5G. The American author Arthur Furstenberg launched the international appeal Stop 5G on Earth and in Space in 2018, which has been signed by more than 300,000 scientists, doctors, environmental organizations and citizens from 214 nations by the end of March 2021. The appeal is addressed to the United Nations, the World Health Organization, the European Union, the Council of Europe and the governments of all countries of the world and calls for an immediate halt to the expansion and deployment of the 5G radio network including the use of 5G transmission systems on space satellites. The harmful effect of radio frequency radiation on humans and the environment has been proven. The use of 5G is an experiment on humanity and the environment, which is defined as a crime by international law. Unfortunately, in the general digitalization craze, too many government representatives and media fail to provide balanced information on all aspects of 5G. In order for this call to finally be heard, everyone can become active. Talk to politicians and your friends and neighbours. Write letters. Participate in national or international appeals. And engage in the education about these facts and open questions. And most importantly, be a role model yourself in everything you say and do. As exciting and helpful as technological progress is in many ways, one thing must never be forgotten. Technology is merely an aid, a tool designed to serve man in the realisation of his life's mission. On our path of development, humanity has reached a point where our actions could have global repercussions even as far as the extinction of life and the destruction of the entire planet. The unbridled pollution and harassment of all life by microwave radiation is one of these effects. It is therefore high time to explore our reason for existence and to orient our lives towards fulfilling this reason for existence. This is not possible in the noise of the uninterrupted temptations and empty promises of the entertainment and distraction industry, or the mass and social media, about which absolutely nothing is social except the name. This is only possible by listening into the organ which provides the strongest magnetic force and connects people, our heart. The sources and further information on this video can be found in the article of the same name. You can see the link below. Visit us again and recommend the World Foundation for Natural Science.